So, good morning, everyone. So, this is the activity two, the measuring of ma measuring mass. This is presented by the group two. So, let's begin. So, our objectives for this reporting is um, to introduce the analytical balances for mass measurements, to describe the different types of analytical balances, to determine the effects of different factors on the weight of materials. So for our discussion, in most analysis, an analytical balance must be used to obtain highly accurate masses. It has maximum, maximum capacity that ranges from one gram to several kilograms and a precision at maximum capacity of at least one part in 10 to the power of five. Less accurate laboratory balances are also employed in the analytical analytical laboratory for mass measurements where the demands for reliability are not critical. So on the left side of our presentation, this is the actual picture of a analytical balance. So for our first, um, for, the, for the first part, draw an analytical balance, label its parts and indicate their functions. So in our analytical balance, we have eight parts the draft shield, level indicator, display, level adjustment feet, door handle, balance pan, air button, and the power button. So the draft shield, it protects samples from the external environment. Influences such as air or dust, hence help to improve general weighing performance. Next is the level indicator, which is used to observe the, calib the calibration level of of our analytical balance. Next is the display. It is where the piece counting, percent weighing, and density determination displayed. Next is the level adjustment fit. is used to calibrate the level of the analytical balance. Next is the door and handle. It is used for closing the balance door while weighing on object prevents air current from disturbing the Reading. Next is the balance pan. It is the area where an object is placed to be weighed. Next is the tear button, where pressing the tear button resets the balance display to zero. And the power button is used to switch on or off the analytical balance. So for our next um next number, it will be presented by Marian Yere. Hello po. Number two is types of analytical balance describe the following. Macro balance is the most common type of analytical balance. It has a maximum load of 160 gram to 260 gram and a precision of 0.1 mg. Semicro analytical Analytical balance is a type of analytical balance that has a maximum load of 10 gram to 30 gram and a precision of 0.01 mg. My, Microanalytical balance is a type of analytical balance that has a maximum load of 1g to 3g and a precision of 0.001 mg or 1 mg. Single pan analytical balance is a very highly sensitive lab, lab equipment designed to mes, mes, measure mass with precision. Electronic analytical balance is a class is a class of balance designed to measure a small mass in the sub milligram range. Weighing techniques. Discuss the following weighing techniques. A weighing by addition. Number one is check to ensure that the horizontal position of a, of the balance is level. Each balance is equipped with a level indica indicator. Number two, clean the balance pan with, with a brush. Number three, place a weighing boat 
small beaker may also be used on the center of the balance pan and be sure to close the balance doors. Number four, pair the balance and wait until it reads zero gram. Number five, remove the weight boat from the balance. Gently add solid sample to the weight boat. Never add region while the weight boat is in the balance. Number six, return the weight boat to the balance and close the balance door. Record the weight to the nearest tenth of a milligram for four places after the decimal. Remove the boat and sample. Transfer the sample to the appreciate piece of glassware. Next. Number B, weighing by difference. Number one, check the Check to ensure that the horizontal position of the balance is level. Each balance is equipped with a level indicator. Number two, clean the balance with, with a brush. Place a weighing boat on the center of the balance pan and be sure to close the balance doors. Number four, tear the balance and wait until it reads zero grams. Number five, remove the weight boat from the balance Place approximately one to four grams of the materials to be measured into the weighing boat. Number six, return the weigh boat to the balance and close the balance door. Record the weight to the nearest tenth of milligram for play four places after the decimal. <clears throat> Number seven, carefully remove some materials from the weighing boat and place it in an appropriate container. Reweight the weight both. The difference between the original weight and the final weight is equal to the weight of sample taken. Repeat as necessary. Weighing errors. A effect of temperature. For this test, it is used a test tube to determine if different temperature can affect the weights of different samples. For convenience, use beaker to contain the test tube for stability in weighing. Put the beaker on the top loading balance and press there for the balance to reverse at zero. Then weigh a clean, dry test tube and record it weight for the room temperature. After recording, place the same test tube inside the freezer for a one minute and weigh again. Place the same test tube on a Bunsen burner to increase its temperature for two minutes. Immediately reweigh the, the tube and record its weight for comparison. Below are the results of the experiment. Based on the data, when the test tube was set to room temperature, it yielded 13.99 13 grams. When stored in the freezer, it yielded 14.02 grams. When it was placed on a flame, it produced 13.96 grams. The results are as follows. As the temperature increases, the weight decreases. And as the temperature decreases, the weight increases. The weight of the test tube is the inversely proportional to the temperature. The test tube revealed that exposing the materials to different temperature might cause the weight of the material, material to change. Effect of moisture gain of evaporation. For this test, the watch glass contained sodium hydroxide pellets, ethanol, and sulfur were used. So reweigh each sample using a top loading balance. It is aimed to know if samples subjected to air have effect on the initial and latter weight. Record the final weight. As observed, when sodium hydroxide was exposed to air, it weights increase for 0 0.70 grams to 0 0.93 grams. This demonstrates that it gained in weight after being exposed to air. When ethanol was exposed to air, it weights decrease from 0 0.09 grams to 0 0.03 grams. This demonstrates that it loses weight when exposed to air. When the silver was exposed to air, it weights decrease from 0 0.87 grams to 0 0.85 grams. This demonstrates that it loses weight when exposed to air. The test group demonstrated that when materials 
are exposed to air, they may absorb moisture or evaporate, causing the weight of the material, material to change. For letter C, effect of electrostatically charged weighing materials A, clean, A, materials A, clean, empty, and dry plastic weighing cup was weighed beforehand. With a woolen cloth, rub the cup using it for one minute. Then immediately reweigh the weighing cup. Record its weight. For the initial weight of the weighing bottle, the weight is 3.9094. And the weight of the weighing bottle after rubbing with woolen cloth, 3.9094. 9087. The weight of the weighing bottle reduced from 3.909 grams to 3.9087 grams when it was rubbed in the, with the woolen cloth. This reveals that the ele electrostatic charge has the ability to affect or alter the actual weight of the material. This is due to the fact that electrostatic charge materials attract the, to the particles around it, pulling it away from the balance. Next, please. For the buoyancy error, a buoyancy error is the weighing error that develops when the object being weighed has a significantly different density than the standard weights. This error has its origin in the difference in the buoyant force exerted by the medium or air on the object and on the weights. Correction for the buoyancy is accomplished with the, with the equation. W1 is equal to W2 plus W2 multiplied by density of the air over density of the object minus density of the air over density of the weights, where W1 is the corrected mass of the object. W2 is the mass of the standard weights. Density of the object, D, D, O, B, J is the density of the object. D, W, T, S is the density of the weights. And D, and D, air is the density of the air displaced by them. D, air has the value of 0 0.012 grams per uh, cube centimeter. So, answer the problem below. A bottle weighs 7.6500 grams MP and 9.9700 grams after introduction of an organic liquid with a density of 0 0.92 grams per centimeter cube. The balance was equipped with stainless steel weight, which D is equal to 8.0 grams centimeter cube. Correct the mass of the sample for the effects of buoyancy. Show your solution. So for our given, our un unknown is the W1 and our W2 is the 2.32 gram. Since we have sub subtracted the 9.9700 gram and 7.6500 gram. Our D object is 0 0.92 grams per centimeter cube. Our D weights is 8.0 grams per centimeter cube. And our D air is the 0 0.0012 grams per centimeter cube. With our formula, W1 is equal to W2 plus W2 multiplied to D air over D object minus D air over D weights. So we have the the 2.32 grams plus 2.32 grams times 0 0.012 grams per centimeter cube over 0 0.92 grams per centimeter cube minus 0 0.0012 grams per centimeter cube over 8.0 grams per centimeter cube. So we have, um, and the our final answer will be 2.32. 3227 grams. For the guide questions, give a generalization of the effect of temperature in the weight of materials. The weight of the material is inversely proportional to temperature. As the temperature increases, the weight decreases and vice versa. This reveals that temperature can alter the weight of the material in a specific condition. 
give a generalization of the effect of moisture gain or evaporation and on the weight of materials. As materials are exposed to air, it might lose or gain weight due to the fact that when a material is exposed to the air, they may absorb moisture or evaporate or evaporate, causing the, the weight of the material to change. Give a generalization in the effect of weighing electronically charged material on its weight. As electronically charged material attract to the materials around it, pulling it away from the balance, then electrostatic charge has the ability to alter the weight of a certain material. Discuss the precautions in using an analytic, analytical balance. In order to achieve accurate and precise data in using analytical balance, we should keep the balance cal calibrated. We also need to ensure the appropriate and calm environment. We also need to handle the weights properly. We should also store the weights in the right manner. Lastly, take the right measures to weigh the samples. For the conclusions, analytical balances in general measures the mass of a material. In the laboratory, they are used to measure solids, liquids, and tissues. And they have a wide variety of functions in laboratory, including clinical, scientific, and environmental context. Because it has higher readability than other weighing instruments. An analytical balance is the most precise and accurate weighing tool. With analytical balance, we will be able to collect data precisely and perform experiments effectively. That's all. Thank you. Okay, that's it. See you. Pwede niyo na i-unshare. Ibali lang. Ayan. Sige. Um, actually, nasagot naman na ito ng mga reporters, pero let's discuss them one by one para let's see if tama yung binigay nila sa sagot or hindi. So everyone, look at the screen. This is our analytical balance and you can really see this in our um, lab. Marami tayo nito. I think mga tatlong ganito in the laboratory where we can use it sa ana anakem okay so this is what you call an electronic ha electronic ito na analytical balance you have here the whole weighing chamber where in this one is a closed chamber talaga to eliminate the influence of the airflow again to eliminate the influence of the airflow and then Meron kayong makikita na inside. Uh, pwedeng inside, meron ding, depende sa model ng ating analytical balance. Minsan nandito siya sa labas kasi. Minsan nasa loob din. Meron yun siyang parang bilog and then meron siyang bubbles sa, sa loob. And then uh, that is actually used as indicator if the balance, if the balance itself is balanced or not. Okay, if the analytical balance is like securely balanced, kung magbibigay ba siya ng correct um, weight ng ating object or hindi. Paano natin malalaman? Dapat yung bubbles nasa center siya class. Pag hindi yan siya nakasenter, itong bubbles na nasa loob, it means na hindi class level yung lahat ng paa ng ating um, analytical balance. Ito yung level screw 
Ito yung tinatawag na paa levels ko. Pag hindi yan siya level lahat, meaning nakatagilid yung analytical balance natin, hindi siya magbibigay ng correct measurement. So again, ang tawag dyan level indicator. This is the main body. You will see in the main body the display. And then, um, the level screw at the bottom again is like the, the yung paa ng ating electronic uh, analytical balance. Ina-adjust yan siya. So, pwede mo siyang i-turn uh, para ma-adjust na maging pantay silang lahat. And paano mo malalaman na okay na yung pag-adjust? Again, dito mo titingnan sa level indicator. Dapat yung bubbles nasa gitna. Okay? And then, uh, we have here in the weighing chamber three glass doors. Meron both sides and meron sa taas. So this is where we open the chamber so that we can place inside the substance that we are going to weigh. And sa natin ilalagay yung substance dito sa pan. So the pan supports the object to be weighed class. And then surrounding the pan is the anti-drift ring uh, that is just to protect um, our object to be measured para hindi siya ma-influenced by the air drafts. Kasi even air uh, can influence the measurement of the weight. That's how sensitive the electronic analytical balance is. And we have here mga buttons sa baba ng displays, the key panel, wherein we can do the tearing para i-zero natin yung measurement before weighing or pwede din for other function ng mga setting and calibration. We can even change the unit. Most of the time, we use grams in weighing, but actually our electronic analytical balance can, can be set na pwede din siya uh, pounds or other pa na units of measurement. So these are the most important parts that you have to know about our electronic analytical balance. So to define analytical balance, it's actually a highly sensitive balance. Highly sensitive. That is why it has a chamber, a closed chamber, because it's sensitive even to air. But depending on analytical balance, it, it can weigh um, grams up to how many kilograms and it has a precision of at least one part in 10 raised to the power of 5 at maximum capacity. So we believe that our electronic analytical balance can give us a high precision and high accuracy weight of the materials that we are weighing. So the modern ones even has a precision and accuracy at one part in 10 raised to the power of 6 at full capacity. Lahat as in yung pinakamabigat na kaya niyang iway, um, magiging precise yun kung iway mo siya ulit or magiging accurate. Pero meron tayong different types of analytical balance. Yung pinakita sa picture kanina, that is just an electronic analytical balance. Meron pa tayong others like macro balance. Pero ito, this one is a classification based on the capacity na pwede nilang iway. Pag macro balance, meaning it can weigh high, I mean large quantities of materials, pwedeng mag-range between 160 to 200 Grams. And it has a standard deviation of plus and minus 0 0.01 um, milligrams, meaning pwede siyang magmali, mag-deviate from the correct uh, measurement, pero at least 0 0.01 milligrams lang. That is also true for the other balances that we have, I mean analytical balances, but when you say semi-microanalytical balances, um, lesser yung kaya niyang iway, that's just 10 to 30 grams. So how much more si microanalytical balance? Micro itself means maliit na. So ang capacity niya lang ay 1 to 3 grams. Okay. Question so far? Questions? Wala? Okay. Sige. So traditional analytical balance. This one is yung... Ano na, karaan na yun siya na analytical balance na to. So, traditional analytical balance. Yan siya. As you can see, meron yan siyang two pans being attached here. 
Um, and then, konti lang din yung ma-way natin dito. So, kagaya ng dati na yung pag nagpantay na yung two pans, that's how we know na um, yung ano yung weight ng ating substance na i-way. So, meaning, meron tayong ilalagay dyan na mga... Ang tawag doon, yung standard weights na meron siyang nakalagay, example, 5 grams, ilalagay mo siya dito sa first beam or first pan. And then, yung yung weight ay yung substance na i-weigh natin doon sa other pan. Pag nagpantay sila, meaning pareha silang 5 grams. Yun yung mga traditional na dati pa, pero hindi talaga natin makukuha yung exact weight na yung may mga point something kasi pre-weighed lang na mga... Weights. Weights kasi ang tawag sa kanila kayo baka malito kayo na ilalagay dito. And then meron tayong single pan analytical balance from the name itself. Uh, this is more convenient to use kasi hindi na dalawang pan here na hahanapin mo pa kung kailan sila magpapantay. Itong single pan, this is more convenient and uh, it can weigh faster uh, than the traditional analytical balance natin. So ito yung tinatawag na single analytical balance. Meron pa rin yan siyang weights dyan na naka-attach pero at least hindi ka na hindi na ikaw yung magbabalance kailan sila magpapantay dalawa kasi magbibigay ito ng ano meron kasi siyang display so magbibigay na siya ng weight ng substance natin so ito yung dati dati na mukha ng analytical balance natin ngayon kasi ito na ang ginagamit electronic analytical balance. So though different models kasi different manufacturing company pero parehas lang sila ng gamit lahat. They they still have the parts and the same functions pa rin. So meron pa rin yan siyang level indicator diyan, meron pa ring screw sa baba. Okay? So any questions or any question about our analytical balances? Meron bang gustong i-ano, i-clarify? Wait lang ha. Ano man eh. Up yung cellphone. Looking at the time. It's 10 o'clock. Okay. Now we have two types of um, yung weighing method class. Weighing by addition and weighing by uh, difference. You have to know this by heart. Kasi pag mag-face to face na tayo and even even if hindi tayo maka-face to face ngayon baka next year uh, tapos magkakaroon ka ng mga laboratory activities you have to know what to do when you are asked to do weighing by addition. So pag sinabing weighing by addition um anong ginagawa you have to um get the weight of the container with the sample and then isa subtract lang natin yung weight of container that's how we get the weight of the sample para mas madali siya maintindihan let's watch a video on how are we going to do this wait lang wait lang First we have the free version text basic spelling and grammar. Grammarly premium on the other hand. Weighing by addition. Okay. This is the objectives of this video are to learn proper weighing technique and to learn the weighing by addition method. To weigh by addition, you will require Kim wipes, a clean and dry beaker, finger cots, a spatula, a compound to weigh, and a laboratory notebook. Make sure you are wearing proper protective equipment. On an analytical balance, with all the balance doors closed, zero the balance. It is important to never handle the beaker with bare hands, as the oils from your fingers add mass to the beaker. Handle the beaker with finger cots, gloves, or Kim wipes wrapped around the beaker. Place the beaker into the center of the balance pan. Gently close the balance doors. Wait for a stable reading. 
Once a stable reading is achieved, record the mass of the beaker in your laboratory notebook. Remove the beaker from the analytical balance and take it to the top loading balance. Don't forget to close the balance doors when not in use. Your laboratory notebook should be set up like this. Use a brush to clean the top loading balance of any dust or solids. Place the beaker on the top loading balance. Tear the top loading balance with the beaker on it. Chemicals should never be weighed directly on a balance. Remove the beaker from the balance. If the bench is dirty, it is a good idea to place the beaker on a Kim wipe to prevent particles from adhering to the outside of the beaker and increasing its mass. Measure out the desired amount of compound to within 10%. To check the mass of compound added, return the beaker to the balance. Add or remove some of the compound as required. Be sure that any excess compound removed is discarded into the solid waste container and not returned to the stock bottle. Once the desired amount is added to the beaker, return to the same analytical balance that was used to weigh the empty beaker. Be sure to never touch the beaker with your bare hands. Repeat the steps used to measure the empty beaker. Zero the balance with the balance doors closed. Place the beaker containing the compound on the center of the balance pan. Gently close all doors and wait for a stable reading. Once a stable reading is achieved, record the mass of the beaker and compound in your laboratory notebook. The mass of compound is the difference between the beaker and compound mass and the mass of the empty beaker. You now know how to weigh by addition. Okay, so that's how we weigh by addition. So, ulitin natin yung procedure ha on how to do weighing by addition. Una, syempre, we have to calibrate first our balance na uh, level sila. How do we know that? Let's look at the indicator. The level indicator, if the bubbles is at the center, then we are good with our analytical balance. And then we have to clean our pan, the circle at the center class. Let's get rid of the other particles na pwedeng na spill doon from the previous weighing. And then uh, we may place a weighing boat or a small beaker or anything class that we can use in weighing because we don't uh, put directly our sample doon sa pan. Kapag ka nalalagyan yun ng chemicals yung pan natin, nag, ano siya, nag rust nag, nagtataya yun. So meron tayong analytical balance na may marami ng taya ngayon sa school kasi yung mga spillage during the weighing hindi nalinisan ng maayos. So, kahit na hindi talaga directly nilalagay. Pero do not forget to place your sample to be weighed like in a small beaker. And then you have to tear the balance. When you say you tear the balance, meaning zero mo talaga siya. Na yung initial reading zero talaga, um, before mo i-weigh, -i ilagay sa um, center. Sa center talaga ng pan yung i-weigh mo. So, remove the weigh boat from the balance. Gently add solid sample at the weighing boat. Okay? So, i-add mo muna yung sample mo doon sa weighing boat mo. It can be a beaker. So, never add reagent while the weight boat is in the balance. Do not forget that. Yung beaker mo na nilagay mo sa... Ano, sa Weighing balance, pag maglalagay ka na ng sample, hindi doon diretso ha. Tatanggalin mo talaga yung beaker mo sa pan and then that's the time you add your sample. Pag na-add mo na yung sample mo, ibalik mo lang yung weighing boat mo or yung beaker mo doon sa balance and you close all the doors. Remember, may mga doors ang balances natin, two sa sides and one sa top. Kapag ka hindi natin yun nag ma-close, uh, magkakaroon tayo ng variation with the weighing because of the presence of 
air. So after that, pag na-close na, pag, pag na-stabilize na yung reading niya, we will be re uh, recording the weight of the beaker or the weighing boat plus the sample. So after that, i-transfer na natin yung sample natin to the appropriate piece of glassware. So that's how we do the weighing by addition and we compute for the weight of our sample by simply e, uh, getting the difference between the weight of the container with the sample minus weight of the container. So unahin natin weigh yung container, lagyan natin siya ng sample, i-weigh natin siya ulit, and then i-minus na lang natin to get, to, to get, sorry, to get the weight of the sample. Again, we call that weighing by addition. Now, the second method is called weighing by difference. Again, weighing by... Again, weighing by difference yung second one. And let's see how are we going to do the weighing by difference. Wait lang. Uh, let's check. Let's stop. Weighing by Techniques. Again, this is ano ha, weighing by difference. So let's see ano yung difference nila sa weighing by addition. Good job, Sky. Let's go. Right, in this video we're going to learn how to weigh by difference and we're going to do that using the top loading balance here and the analytical balance here too. In order to weigh by difference, start by taking your weighing vial, take the lid off and pop it on the top loading balance. You can then get your solid ready that you're going to be weighing out, zero the balance with your vial on and then weigh in the approximate mass you need. So here I need about 0.2 to 0.3 grams. You can see on the balance that's about the right weight, so we're set there. Pop the lid back on the substance so you don't want it getting contaminated and make sure that you put the lid back on your weighing vial so nothing falls in or out. Then off you go to the balance room, got your sample there. Make sure that the analytical balance doors are all shut and zero the instrument. After you've done that, double check, make sure it does say zero. You can then open the door, pop your sample in and slide the door shut. And you then want to take a reading of your initial mass all four decimal places. Once you've recorded that mass, slide the door open, take your sample out and carefully transfer it into the flask that you're going to be working with. Make sure that you don't lose any on the transfer, so right inside the neck here. Pop the lid back on, there'll still be a little residue left in your vial, that's just fine. Make sure the balance still says zero, pop the vial back in and take the reading again, all four decimal places. This is called weighing by difference because the difference in mass between what you had earlier and what you have now will be the mass inside your flask. So you now know the exact mass that you've weighed by difference. If you need to transfer the mass into a standard flask or something with a narrower neck, you can use a glass funnel and transfer into this instead. And then afterwards use your wash bottle or solvent to rinse all of the solid into the flask. And make sure it all gets into the receptacle. Right, that's the basics that you need in order to be able to weigh by difference. Good luck. So that's weighing by difference. Baliktad sila na no? weighing by addition is i-weigh mo muna yung iyong lalagyan and then i-add mo yung sample mo. And then i-weigh mo siya again. And then parehas lang naman yung formula. Weight of the container plus the sample minus weight of the sample. A uh, weight of, minus weight of the container I mean. That's how you get the sample. Yung sa weight of difference lang baliktad. 
ilagay mo muna yung sample mo, magkakaroon ka ng approximation, you can use a top load balance. Yung top load balance yung parang very common na balance natin na like nung gina, ginagamit sa palengke, yung walang takip, uh, pero electronic pa rin siya. Approximation, ginagamit lang yun siya for approximation. And then pag nakuha mo na yung approximate mo na sample, ilalagay mo na siya inside an analytical balance. So, baliktad. Nauna mo siya i-weigh yung container plus the sample. Tapos, after that, i-transfer mo yung sample sa another na lalagyan uh, before mo ibalik yung empty container doon sa analytical balance to get its weight. Pero again, the same ano ha, the same formula. Weight of the sample is equal to weight of the container plus sample minus weight of the container. So, ang procedure lang yung nagkaiba, yung pag-weigh, uh, pag kung ano yung mauunang i-weigh. Okay, questions so far? Wala? Sige, so let's have the weighing errors. You have to take note of this, the weighing error. We have here... Uh, merong, mga, merong factor ang temperature, moisture gain and evaporation, electrostatic charge, and the buoyancy error. Now, take note of this. Nakita nyo ito sa result ng experiment na nakita nyo sa worksheet. Sa temperature class, always remember to cool down first anything. Kung nag-boil ka tapos after boiling, kailangan mong makuha ang weight niya, you have to cool it down first. Or, kung galing naman siya sa ref or sa freezer, kailangan mo muna siyang um, i-make sure na room temperature, pareha sila ng uh, temperature ng surroundings before mo siya i-weigh. Bakit? Kasi merong effect yung temperature change doon sa weight ng substance. So what is our general rule here? Meron kasing film of moisture yung mga substances natin with the changes of temperature. So ang nag ang ang mangyayari pag cold ang sample mo, it will become heavier. Please take note of that. Pag cold ang sample, it's coming from a refrigerator or a freezer mas mabigat siya sa totoo niya na weight. Pero kung warm naman yung sample mo or mainit, pag i weigh mo siya, it will be lighter than its correct weight. Okay? So merong drift kasi merong change in the direction uh, because of the uh, un, uh, or unbalanced na temperature. So take note kailangan balance ang temperature. Always, heated objects must always be cooled to rem, uh, room temperature before being weighed. Kasi meron tayong two sources of error due to the difference in the temperature. Una, convection currents within the balance case exert a buoyant effect on the pan and the object. Since magkaiba ang temperature ng pan ng ating analytical balance and the object being weighed, there will be currents involved there and that will cause a buoyant effect. So later we'll talk about buoyant error. So mag-iiba ang kanyang measurement. And then yung sa closed conte container class, there will be warm warm air na matatrap doon and that will cause the lowering of the uh, measurement of the mass sa ating warm din na sample. Okay? So again, pag mainit, magiging lighter. Pag malamig, magiging heavier. So pointers, do not forget this. When you're going to weigh something, acclimatize muna natin yung ating samples before weighing. When you say acclimatize, we have to make sure na pareha sila ng temperature ng room or even ng pan. So our room temperature most likely nasa 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Pag galing siya sa ref, eh, paano muna natin siya? Ipa, ipa, ipa room temp. Hindi naman sa iinit talaga, pero dapat room temp. Ganun din sa mainit na sample. Ipa-cool down natin siya. And then let's use tweezers. Um, kasi pag i-direct natin yung kamay natin class sa lalagyan ng uh, substance na ating i-weigh, mag-a-add up yun siya sa weight ng material. Kasi our hands 
also contain oil and other things pa kung ano pang meron sa hand natin. Matatransfer yun siya doon sa container and it will cause variation sa measurement ng ating mass. Okay? And then use sample vessels with small surface area as they acclimatize fastest. So, syempre, the more na maliit yung ating lalagyan, mas mabilis siyang mag-cool down if mainit yung ating lalagyan. And then, position balances away from heat sources such as windows and radiators. Kasi pag naging mainit yon ang pan, syempre, nag-cool down ka sa sampoy mo pero mainit pala ang pan mo, may temperature difference na naman yon And then again, it will cause variation in the weighing. So that's the first one. That's the first source of error, the temperature. So do not ever forget to acclimatize your sample before weighing. The second one is moisture gain and evaporation. There are really chemicals class that are called hygroscopic substances. Please take note of the word. When you say hygroscopic, these are substances that has the, that have the ability to absorb moisture from the air. Again, mag-absorb siya ng moisture from the air. One example of that is sodium hydroxide. Again, one of, one example of the hygroscopic substance, sodium hydroxide. Pag nilagay mo siya sa container na walang takip, makikita mo siya class magmo-moisten siya hanggang magiging liquid siya. Kasi si sodium hydroxide may tendency na mag-absorb ng water sa air. Hygroscopic. And that will affect the weight. Kasi originally, kumuha ka lang ng 2 grams ng sodium hydroxide. Pero before weighing, hinayaan mo lang siya sa lalagyan. Walang takip. Nag-absorb nag na siya ng moisture. Yung moisture na na-absorb niya, it will add up to the weight of the sodium hydroxide. Or to, that is true to all other hygroscopic substances. So be careful in weighing. You also have to know whether your substance is hygroscopic or not. Kung kailangan mo ba ng may closure na lalagyan or hindi. Okay? And then there are also volatile substances. They will volatilize easily even at room temperature. So we have to be very careful also with this. Kasi mababawasan ang totoong weight niya kasi nag-evaporate na siya. So please know the substance you are weighing, whether they are hygroscopic or nag-evaporate easily. So what are we going to do, especially for those substances, hygroscopic and volatile? Kailangan natin gumamit ng merong takip or yung long neck na vessels para hindi talaga madaling mag-escape kung volatile or hindi madaling mag-absorb pag hygroscopic. Aside from that, kailangan may closure. It can be a cover or a stopper. And then, we also have to clean our weighing pan from the dirt or even water drops kasi again, pwede siyang i-absorb ng ating hygroscopic substances. That's the second one class na magkakaroon ng effect on the weight of our material. The third one is called the electrostatic charge. So, merong mga substances and even containers na merong electrostatic charge and magkukos yun siya ng unstable weighing values. There is a drift and merong, uh, meron kasi itong, ano, uh, yung pag may electrostatic charge yung substances natin or yung kanyang container, either mag-attract sila or mag-repel with each other. So, yung mga molecules dyan, magkakaroon ng drift it can be away from the pan or papunta lahat sa pan. So ang mag mangyayari yan, merong variations sa result ng iyong weighing. So ano yung gagawin natin to avoid this? We can use anti-static na mga instrument para ma-neutralize yung surface charges. So kung yung substance, substance natin talaga ay electrostatic charge, um, gumamit na lang tayo ng lalagyan na anti-static para they will not either repel or attract each other. Yung mga charges nila, walang drift na mga molecules and makukuha mo talaga ang tamang 
weighing. So aside from the container, we can also use products designed to be anti-static like yung gloves natin, anti-static naman yan. So it will not really either attract or repel the materials na i-weigh natin. And then meron din tayong weighing boats designed for that na anti-static. And then i-maintain natin yung air humidity above 60%. When you say humidity, that refers to the amount of moisture in the air. So dito sa atin sa Philippines, ano talaga? Humid talaga dito. Maraming, maraming water. So maintain lang natin above para wala ding uh, masyadong effect on the electrostatic charge. And then connect weighing pan to conductive chamber. Pwedeng, and that's another instrument just to avoid the... A repel and the attraction of molecules na sa mga electrostatic charge. Okay? Meron din tayo actually glass or mga metal na weighing vessels na anti-static. We just have to know na nalalagay naman yan sa label nila kung anti-static sila or hindi. Yung mga samples natin na merong charge, syempre yung mga ions natin. Mga metal ions natin, they have charge. So, uh, pag nilagay natin sila sa nag-a-attract din ng charge na container, syempre ang molecule magkakaroon ng drift. Kasi kung positive-negative, mag-a-attract sila with each other, mag a add up yun siya sa totoong weight. And kung magre-repel naman sila from each other, the drift is like uh, going away from the pan, so mag magiging lighter ang iyong substance. Okay? So that's the third one. And then the last one is the so-called buoyancy error. We are talking about uh, errors in weighing. Ha? Kasi sa analytical balance, we are very much concerned with precision and accuracy. So even the weighing has to be accurate. And kailangan natin uh, maiwasan itong mga errors na ito. So kailan magde-develop si buoyancy error? Kapag ka there is a significant difference between the density of the sample and the standard weights. So yung yung analytical balance kasi natin class sa loob, meron yan silang standard weights or yung uh, kung hindi electronic, yung mga simple analytical balance natin, naalala niyo yung double balance. So for example, dalawa ito nakakonek. Tapos yung sample ilalagay natin dito. Tapos yung isa dito ilalagay yung weights. Yung mga pre-weighed weights, yung mga example ganito, uh, metal siya tapos na nakalagay 5 grams. So pag nilagay natin siya dyan, syempre magiging un unbalanced na yun siya. So dadagdagan natin ang ating sample hanggang maging 5 grams na sila. Pero kapag ka there is a difference between the density density of our weight na ginamit here and our sample, magkakaroon yun siya ng tinatawag na buoyancy error. So, before tayo magbigay ng tamang weighing na measurement, kailangan muna natin i-correct ito. So, again, kailangan natin siya i-correct kapag ka nakita natin na there is a difference between the density of the standard weight and the and that of the sample. So ito yung ginagamit natin class na formula for correcting our um, weight sa, because of the buoyancy. So the W1 there is the corrected mass of our sample and the W2 is the mass of the standard weights. Pag standard weights, may mass na talaga yan siyang nakalagay. So merong isang like box na it weigh 1 gram or yung isa 2 grams hanggang magpantay sila and makuha mo yung tamang weighing. And then, i-multiply natin sa density of the air. It is already given. This is constant. Syrup. Uh, 0 0.0012 grams per cubic centimeter, i-divide natin sa density ng ating object or yung sample na wini-weigh natin. And then minus again the density of the air divided by ito, density ito na weights. So sa worksheet ninyo, meron doong sample problem. So ito yung ating sample problem. Meron tayong bottle weighing 7.65 grams empty. Pag meron na siyang laman, naging 9.97 grams na siya. Okay? Ilagay natin yung organic liquid natin. And then, yung organic liquid, 
yung density niya ay 0.92 grams per cubic centimeter. Nung nilagay natin siya sa analytical balance natin, gumamit tayo ng weighing uh, ng standard weight. Tapos kung titingnan ang density ng standard weight, it's 8 grams per cubic centimeter. So you can see the difference 8 grams versus 0.92 grams. Meron talaga silang difference. Actually, nangyayari itong difference kapag ka-liquid yung winiway natin. Kasi medyo maliit yung density ng liquid compared to that of our standard weight. So that's the time na magko-correct tayo ng ating um, mass. So given na lahat, uh, yung density of the air given na din, ang kailangan lang natin kunin muna is yung weight ng ating object or yung weight ng ating sample. So di ba sa weighing by addition and difference to get the weight of the sample, ima-minus mo lang siya. Weight of the container plus the sample minus weight of container. So ito, weight of container plus sample 9.9700 minus ang weight ng empty container is 7.6500 grams. So nandito yung kanyang solving. So andito na siya, 2.3 grams. Ito yung W2 natin, ang density of air given na siya. Yung density ng object nakita na din natin sa problem 0.92 grams per cubic centimeter and even yung Wait, so we can really proceed with the computation. I ano lang natin siya, I substitute. So 2.32 grams plus 2.32 grams times. Remember sa taas density of air, so that is constant 0.0012 grams divided by una density of the object, that's 0.92 minus uh, density of air again 0.0012 grams divided by 8.0 Gram. So, isimplify muna natin, divide this 0.0012 grams divided by 0.92. This is the answer, 0.00134347. And then ito, i-divide din natin. And this is the answer, 0.0015. And then, syempre PEMDAS, uunahin natin yan, isubtract natin before natin i-multiply here before din tayo mag-add. So, ang corrected weight na ngayon is 2.3227887 grams. So, kung hindi tayo nag-correct, uh, though malapit lang naman, 2.3 grams yung sagot. Pero pag nag-correct tayo, class, kasi merong buoyancy error na nangyari, kasi nga hindi, there is a significant difference sa weight as a density ng weights and sa density ng sample, ang totoo palang weight ng sample natin ay 2.32 kung 2 decimal places. Okay? So that's buoyancy error. So I think um, uh, that's it na kung sa worksheet pa tayo. Pero i-discuss lang natin yung precautions on using analytical balance. Do not forget ha na yung panang balance dapat nasa center. And we have to make sure na ma-avoid natin yung corrosion. Dapat walang spillage. And hindi tayo mag weigh na yung sample directly ilagay sa pan. Always remember to use uh, weighing vessel. Pwedeng beaker, pwedeng weighing bottle. Okay, pwede ding weighing boat. And then... We have to make special precaution also for liquids. Pag nag-weigh tayo ng liquids, uh, uh, make sure ninyo na hindi mag-spill ha kasi mababasa yung ating analytical balance, masisira din siya. Okay? And kung nakita nyo na yung bubbles doon sa level indicator ay hindi naka-center, it's either you adjust the screw at the bottom or if you are not knowledgeable enough to adjust that, you can call your instructor to um adjust the balance. Okay? So, paano linisan ng balance? We can use the brush. So, dili ninyo siya ka ng trapuhan o bisag-unsa ha, brush atong gamiton. And take note to acclimatize your samples first before weighing. When you say acclimatize, it means we have to make sure that the temperature is the same with the room temperature. Kung heated siya, then we have to cool it down. Kung galing siya sa freezer, um, ipapa-warm up natin siya, pero hanggang room temperature lang. 
And you can use tongs or yung finger pads. Nakita nyo kanina sa video, may finger pads siya nilagay sa fingers niya para hindi direct yung finger mo nakahawak doon sa lalagyan ng iwiway natin. Kasi again, meron tayong oils and many other things in our fingers that can add up to the weight of our material. Kasi bibikit yun siya doon sa lalagyan. So that is class activity number two, measuring mass. So I hope by the time na mag-face-to-face -face tayo, um, meron kayong knowledge sa mga precautions sa paggamit ng analytical balance. Kasi it's not the same with that of the ordinary ordinary na mga kilohan natin. Meron siyang special precautions kasi very sensitive siya na material. Okay, any question? Any question? Wala? Sure? So I will be giving you a copy of my slide also. Yung reporter, you can send. Meron siguro kayong GC, you can send a copy of your slide also to your classmates and also the recording of this is a send ko din sa inyo.